everyone. Welcome to week seven of sock season, November 12th through 18th, 2023. I'm Carol, host of a Stitch in Time podcast, and I can be found on Ravelry as Knits and Pearls. This week, we are going to continue with socks from this book, Indie Socks by Chrissy Gardner. All of the socks I'm going to show you today were uh, knit as part of the CSK Make Along, which took place uh, in 2010 and 2011. We're going to start off today with some crazy long knee socks. I knit these uh, between December of 2010 and January of 2011. The pattern is called Almacia Lane, which I suspect I'm saying wrong, has something to do with uh, trees and shrubs or something. <laughs> um, these are a DK weight sock knit from the toe up and I used Fleece Artist Merino 3.6 in the deep sea colorway. I made a number of modifications to custom fit these to my feet and legs and all of those details can be found on my Ravelry project page, which I will link below. Um, and I will uh, link the rest of the socks that I talked to you about today also. So let's take a look. Um, there is a lace pattern that runs up the front of the entire sock and it is bordered by these cable and lace uh, columns. And then you can see there is a ribbing at the back of the cuff and ends with a with a ribbed cuff. Uh, it has a um, short row heel. <laughs> Surprisingly, I've actually worn these socks uh, fairly often, not just for around the house, but um, I have used them when we've been going out in cold weather. And I've had some long johns on and tucked these on uh, or pulled these on over top of those and they've helped keep me nice and warm. So let's give you another close up here. And now I will model them for you. socks this week is called Supernova. These socks were knit from the top down and I made them between January and February of 2011. The yarn I used is from Cherry Tree Hill. It is the Super Sock Select in the Sweet Marmalade colorway. And this is another of the custom Sock Knitters Anonymous group colorways that I talked about in week five. Um, when I knit these, the Sock Knitters Anonymous technique for the month was slipped stitches. And so uh, these socks fit in perfectly for, for uh, a couple of reasons. So let me bring this in a little closer. This was not a quick knit. You can see there's a lot of intricate stitching that runs down both the sides of the sock and down the center of the sock. Uh, but um, I really love how this uh, yarn and pattern goes together. I think this is one of my favorite pairs of socks from the whole collection. So, um, let me put them on and show you what they look like on my feet. that 
was released in February of 2011 was appropriately called True Love and featured a heart motif that uh, runs down the uh, front of each sock. I knit these from some Miss Babs Windsor sock in the Southern Dusk colorway and I received this yarn as part of a color co-op yarn club that I was uh, participating in back then. Uh, people would submit photographs and then I think there were four different dyers that would tie up their interpretation of the photo and then uh, it changed each month which dyer you received your yarn from. So when I got this I knew it would be perfect for these socks and I actually knit them up in a fairly similar yarn to what Chrissy Gar uh, Gardner had used in the um, original sample. So let me bring this in closer so you can see. I'm going to twist first off, just twist the sock around so you can see that heart motif cable that runs down the front of the sock and then the remainder of it is just um, these little twisted stitches and ribbing. Uh, traditional heel flap and gusset, rounded toe. So these are perfect, as I said, for February and celebrating Valentine's Day. And you'll get an even better look at that heart motif when I show you them on my feet. Chrissy Gardner included in the collection and in fact it took me a couple of months to knit these. I worked on them between March and May of 2011. These were knit from the top down and I used Knit Picks Essential, it's now called Straw, and this is the Grasshopper colorway. Uh, let me bring this work of art in closer to show you. Uh, as you will note, there are two different patterns that run down each side of the sock. A lace, leafy lace pattern on the front and then some vines on the back. So again, I will just twist my the sock on the sock blocker so you will get a better sense of it. There's the front and note it also has like a pico edge at the top and some eyelets and then it has these climbing vines on the back. Not, uh, and that uh, extends into the heel flap. So yes, not a quick sock to work up, but um, definitely a very intricate and beautiful. So you will get a better look again at them on my feet when I uh, put this footage in here for you. just the right yarn for the ninth pattern which was released in April of 2011 and so I skipped that month and picked up the CSK again in May when Finings was released. Once again uh, these socks feature a different pattern that runs down the back and front of each sock. These socks were knit from the toe up and I used the Woolen Rabbit Harmony Sock in the Mystic Mountain Pine colorway. So let me bring these in so you can see. 
uh, that also has ribbing that runs up the side, each side of the sock. A uh, heel flap and gusset and the back pattern again extends down into the heel flap and then a rounded toe. So I'm once again going to just shift this sock around a little bit so you can see those stitch patterns. So there's the front. Once again, there's a bo botanical theme going on here. And then this is the lace pattern on the back. And hopefully you will get a better look at both of those when they're on my feet. which I knit in June of 2011 is called De Tourbillon, which means two whirlpools. And it features a spiraling lace pattern that runs down each sock in opposite directions. In most cases, I shopped from my stash when it came to knitting socks from this collection. But for these socks, I really wanted to use the same yarn that had been used in the sample. And so I purchased a skein of Mountain Colors Crazy Foot in the North Wind colorway. So these socks were knit uh, for, or they are knit top down. And unfortunately the pattern was only written for a 72 stitch sock, which I knew was going to be too large for me. Uh, so I went ahead and I modified the leg to 60 stitches. Unfortunately, when I got to the gusset, I couldn't figure out how to manipulate the stitches um, on the instep so that it would continue the pattern properly. Uh, thankfully, Kiersey Gardner came to the rescue and she wrote up instructions for a 60 stitch instep, which I then uh, test knit for her. Uh, in the end, though, it doesn't look like it was included in the book. Um, I really love how these socks knit up. I think the yarn is really pretty and I love this spiraling pattern. You can see it has a traditional heel flap and gusset and a rounded toe. So um, yeah, I'll show them to you uh, on my feet now. pattern which had been released in April and I finished up these socks in July of 2011. This is Owen Berger which was named for Chrissy Gardner's son Owen and it's a more masculine pattern which uh, features ribbing and some one by one cabling and also some purl stitches to break up the um, columns of rib. I knit these from Cascade Heritage Sock in color 5667 Long Beach. I can't say as they were the most fun sock to knit with all the little right twists and left twists, um, but I really do like how they turned out and they fit really nicely. They're very comfortable to wear. So let me bring those in and you get a better look at that ribbed pattern. And as you can see, the yarn is like a marled colorway. And now that you've seen them here, I'll show them to you with me wearing them. So 
So that was the seventh and final pair of socks for this week. If you enjoyed this content, please do like and subscribe, and I hope you'll join me for week eight when I will show you more socks from Chrissy Gardner's Indie Socks book. Take care until then, and thanks for watching.